Hey guys, what's going on? Chrisrel here. In this video, we are going to implement usable and consumable items in our inventory system. Let's get started right away by creating a new class that we're going to call usable item. We need to open it up in Visual Studio. Then we can already delete all of the Unity default methods and change it to extend from item. We can't forget to add the create asset menu attribute. This class is going to need a method that we're going to call whenever we want to use the item. For the input parameters of this method, you can input here whatever you want, just go wild with whatever your game needs. For us, we just need a simple character input parameter. Let's also add a variable to indicate if the item is going to be consumed on use or not. We want to use our items whenever we right click on them in the inventory. So we need to come to the character script and change the method that we're calling when we receive the right click event from the inventory to decide if it needs to use the item or equip it depending on the type of item that we clicked. The first change is going to be the method name because it's no longer going to always equip the item. So let's rename it to something more generic. We'll slightly change our original code here to make the method more readable. So we need to find out if the item is equipable, and if it is, we need to cast it to equipable item and equip it. If it's not, we need to find out if it is usable, and if it is usable, we need to cast it to usable item, use it, and then if it is a consumable, we need to remove it from the inventory and destroy it. Just for consistency, we'll also rename the unequip method to equipment panel right click and we'll change the code to be equal to the inventory right-click when we equip an item. Okay, so let's say, as an example for this video, we want to create an item that restores health to our character. First, we'll need to add a public variable for our character's health. And let's give it a default value of 50. After that, we might be thinking about extending the usable item class and when we override the use method, doing something like character.elf plus equals some amount. So we would extend this, for example, to have a potion usable item that increases the character's health. We would have a stat buffing usable item that would increase some of our character stats, and so on and so forth. But there's an even better solution. Instead, we'll create a new usable item effect class, and our usable item class will have a list of usable item effects. Our usable item effect class is going to be a scriptable object as well, and we're going to make it abstract because all of the functionality is going to be implemented in derived classes. We'll also need an abstract execute effect method. This is going to receive a usable item as an input parameter and a character. The reason for the usable item input parameter is because it's pretty useful in many situations to be able to tell which item caused the effect when we actually execute the effect implementation. In the usable items use method, we're going to do a for each over all of the effects and execute each one, passing in the usable item and the character. And now we need to actually create an effect that is going to restore our player's health. We'll create a new script called heal item effect. It's going to extend from usable item effect and we'll need to implement the abstract class by overriding the execute effect method. In here, we can go into our character and actually change its health. For the amount of health that we're going to restore, let's declare a public variable to allow us to configure that in the inspector. We must also remember to use the create asset menu attribute. In Unity, let's go into our items folder and create our potion that's going to restore our character's health. But before we do that, because we already have a ton of items, let's just reorganize these into folders. We'll throw all of our equipable items into the equipment folder, our gold coin will go into the other folder, and our new usable items will go into the usable folder. And while we're at it, our create menu is getting a bit cluttered, so let's also change our scripts to help us reorganize this. Unity allows you to define custom names, in the create asset menu attribute, and it even allows you to define subsections by using a slash. We can do that by passing some arguments into the create asset menu attribute, and the argument that we want to use is the menu name. 
For example, by using the name items followed by a slash and then usable item, this will make our usable items menu entry show up under an items subsection in the menu. Let's do the same thing for our other item types. And we'll also do something very similar to the usable item effects. Finally, let's create our usable item. I'm going to call it Green Potion and accordingly give it the Green Potion icon. Let's also increase its maximum stacks to 20 and mark it as a consumable. And now we also need to create our heal effect. I'm going to prefix its name with the name of the item, Green Potion, just so that we can identify at a glance which item is using it. Let's add some value to the health amount. I'm going to input 10. And now we can select our green potion and then drag the green potion heal effect into the effects list. By having a list of item effects, instead of overriding the usable item class for every different effect that we want, we can mix and match any combination and any number of effects in the same item. Just as a quick tip, this kind of layout would also be very useful for a spells or ability system for the spells and their effects. Now that we have our potion item, let's add it to the player's inventory. We'll test this out in play mode. And we'll select the player game object, just so that we can see the health value, because we haven't implemented any UI for it. And if we right-click our potion, we can see that our health has increased from 50 to 60. This is already quite a good bit of functionality we have right here. But as you might have been able to notice, our usable item doesn't have a tooltip. That's because when we originally made our tooltips, we were only taking into account the equipable items. Let's fix that right now. With all these different types of items that we now have, it might be a better idea to have each subclass of item be responsible for knowing how its tooltip should look like, instead of the item tooltip being the one to decide that. But this needs to be structured in a generic enough way so that other item types that are not equipable can also define their own tooltips. We can see in our item tooltip object that we have basically three sections for the tooltip. The name of the item, a sort of undertitle, and then the description. Right now our sections are essentially called name, slot, and stats. I'm going to rename the slot section to type and the stats section to description. After doing this, we need to go into Unity and reassign the references to these objects because they are now lost as the name has changed. So the text that is going into each of these sections is now going to be its own method in the item class. For the item type text, let's create a method called getItemType, and for the description, let's create a method called getDescription. Now we should start moving the code in the item tooltip into the equipable item, overriding the methods that we just created. I will move the string builder first, and this one is actually going to go into the base item class, because I know that it's going to be used throughout all of our item classes, and this way we can have it in our base class and have it accessible in all our subclasses by making it protected. I'm even going to mark it as static, because this way we can share one instance of the string builder throughout all of our item classes and subclasses, and as long as we don't have multiple threads accessing it, it's going to be okay. And since this is a class that derives from Unity's object, as far as I know, it can't be used on multiple threads anyways, so that's going to work perfectly fine. Now let's override these methods in the equipable item class. The getItemType method is going to return equipment type to string. And here we're going to replace this with the call to getItemType. And the getDescription method is going to be replaced with all of this code that goes into the description text. And here we'll replace it with the call to getDescription. We also need to move the addStat method. 
back in the item tooltip class, we should replace the input parameter instead of being of type equipable item, it should just be of type item, because now we can deal with all types of items. Let's also remove this unnecessary using statement. To match this change, we should go into the character script, into the show tooltip method, and change the cast here to just a simple null check. Let's also override the tooltip methods in the usable item class. Because everything that a usable item can do is dependent on its list of effects, consequently, its description is also going to be dependent on those same effects. Which means that each effect is going to need its own description, and then the usable item's description will be the result of joining the descriptions of all the effects. So let's create a get description abstract method in the usable item effect class. And now we need to implement that method in the heal item effect subclass. And we can see that in Unity, our usable item now has a proper description. So that's the end of this video. This has been one of my favorites to make. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. Subscribe, like, dislike, comment, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.